Welcome to Bed Crime Stories Podcast. I'm your host, T, and today I'm talking once again about the Sarah Boone trial. What you just heard were the last moments of Jorge Torres's life. His girlfriend, Sarah Boone, opted not to let him out of the suitcase. Instead, she went upstairs, said she was going to lie down for 30 minutes, and then proceeded to fall asleep. In the video, you can see that the suitcase is upside down with a zipper on the bottom. However, Jorge Torres ended up in the suitcase. It does appear that Sarah Boone moved it, turned it top down like this. We also know that she hit Jorge's fingertips or hand, supposedly, allegedly, as they came out of the zippered area. She did that with a baseball bat. Trapped in the suitcase, in a crunched up position, with only so much air, Jorge suffered. And Sarah Boone clearly knew that for Jorge, every breath he had left was precious. We know this because she said this. Yeah. You should probably shut the fuck up. That one sentence proves that Sarah Boone knew that if Torres was left in the suitcase for any length of time, he would expire. Yes, she was intoxicated, but she was still aware of what was happening, and this demonstrates that she had a reckless disregard for Jorge's life. She certainly doesn't sound like someone who is certain that if she let Taurus out, he would come for her. Now, in her trial, which officially kicked off today, she's claiming that she did not let him out of the suitcase for reasons of self-defense. She's also claiming that she suffers from blank spouse syndrome. The word that belongs there rhymes with flattered, and begins with a B. YouTube does not like that word, so I can't say it. This defense is going to be a hard sell. Jurors aren't stupid, and once they see the two videos that she took of Jorge in the suitcase, I feel like her fate is sealed. As I said earlier, in watching this video, we and the jury are watching the last moments of Jorge's life, and the person who held the power and who could have prevented his death, Sarah Boone, just 
snickered. She makes for a very unlikable defendant. Can you imagine what Taurus must have been going through inside that dark suitcase? He couldn't take a deep breath. Every word he uttered was like selling a minute of his life. He only had so much breath. Sarah recorded two videos of Taurus in the suitcase. The first one began recording at 11.12 p.m. At that point, Jorge was already having trouble breathing. Sarah later told the police she didn't go back downstairs until 11 a.m. the next morning, and that's when she couldn't find Jorge. Finally, it dawned on her. He was still in the suitcase. That means that at the very least, he was in that suitcase for 11 hours. I took a look at his autopsy report, and it described many injuries, including long nail scratches to his mid-upper back. He had contusions to his left shoulder. On the left side of his skull and forehead, he had contusions considered to have been the result of blunt force trauma. He also had a busted lip. Some people have speculated that Sarah may have pushed that suitcase down the stairs with Taurus in it. Can you say psycho biatch? Sorry. I know she's claimed he committed DV against her in the past, but this is some Kathy Bates shit like out of the movie Misery. We're talking retaliation, revenge. Again, she had a baseball bat right there in that living room. That seems like something that could cause blunt force trauma. But could Torres have inflicted these injuries to himself as he struggled to get out? It doesn't seem like it. He would have had to have more room to move his arms and legs in the suitcase. I would imagine his knees were up to his chest and his arms were tight to his body. That means he couldn't flail or kick. By the way, the autopsy report, which I double checked, said he was 62 inches in length which is five feet two inches tall. This was a very short man, and he only weighed 103 pounds. Here's what's ironic. If he was taller and weighed more, he probably would not have even fit in that suitcase. So this never would have happened. Now, because of her self-defense strategy, Sarah Boone is going to have to take the stand and I can't wait to see that. Get your popcorn and wine because it is going to be a shit show. Sarah getting grilled by Assistant State Attorney Will J is not going to be easy. Boone, in my opinion, is blinded by her ego and she mistakenly thinks she's the smartest person in the room. Big mistake. Her hubris or pride is going to land her in prison. They know that she turned down a plea deal that was offered to her, and that's probably the best outcome she could have gotten. But that's off the table now. So if she's found guilty, the minimum sentence she's facing is 22 and a half years. Sarah is 46 years old right now. That means if she gets the minimum sentence, she'll be 68 years old upon her release, and that's provided she survives in prison. I'd love to ask her if it was worth it. Was her retaliation against Jorge Torres Jr. worth destroying her life, taking her away from her son, leaving Jorge Torres's family in shambles and grief? Only Sarah Boone knows. And that's all for today, and I'll see you next time on Bed Crime Stories.